charge, Jeff Hep! Jeff Hep! Jeff Hep! Thank you. <laughs> Let the review begin! Whoa. See ye, do on. I do mind the time when he's uh, gone again. Oh, it said that the line of soldiers was three miles long. Thank God I've seen my king. Long live King George. Now then, what be that queer looking vessel out to sea there then? That's the Black Diamond, oh. Maester. What sees it, David? Diamond. That's the ship they take the pressed men aboard of. <laughs> It is said there's to be a press gang tonight, as there's such a madness of folk about. Well, friends, we must be getting back to Overcombe. Come along, Martha. How pretty the sea do look in the moonlight, my dear. Oh, yes. Tis just the night for lovers. <laughs> Follow behind. Oh. Not at all close. Yes, but Anne. You deserve it, you know. I deserve anything, but I must take the liberty to say that I hope my behaviour, about forgetting you a while, will not make you wish to keep me always behind. I was that stupid, forgetting you for a time. 
I hadn't seen you for how many years was it? You're a queen to me then. So you are now and always. Oh, very pretty. Oh. And it's only the other day that Miss Matilda Johnson left. Soons, now don't say anything about that. I swear that I never... never deliberately loved her. <laughs> it was quite a sudden sort of thing, you know? But towards you, Anne. Well, I've more or less honoured and respectfully loved you. Off and on. My whole life. Now then, that's true. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Roberts. I am willing, off and on, to believe you. But I don't see any point in you making these solemn declarations. But promise that you'll think of me. No such promise will I give. Shall I tell you something? You're too easily impressed by new faces. And it gives me a bad opinion of you. A very oh, bad opinion. Oh, oh, Anne, dear, you hit me too hard. If ever I do get you, I'm sure I shall have fairly earned you. You won't go off and leave this time. Mm. What's the matter, Bob? Well, I haven't been yet to offer myself as a sea fencible. But I ought to have done it long ago. But you are only one. Surely they can do without you. Oh, no, they can't. Every man helps now the war has become so fierce. But you ought to go. So useful to your father in the mill business. And, and John's a soldier. They, they surely can take only one of you. Well, then it ought to be John, or I'm not much good for anything except food for powder and shot. Oh, don't say that. It's true that I've been vexed with you, but I'm sure I still like you a little, or oh, soon shall. There, now you shouldn't go and be so reckless after that. If anything could keep me at home, your words would. But it would be cowardice and a failure of my duty if I were not to go. We shall hope for the best. I shall come back to you again. Ah, huh. here's something to make us brave and patriotic. To all ranks and descriptions of Englishmen, friends and countrymen, the French are now assembling the largest force that ever was prepared to invade this kingdom to effect our complete ruin and destruction. You are invited voluntarily to come forward in defense of everything that is dear to you. Rouse, therefore, and unite as one man in defence of your country. God save the king. I must go and join at once. But, Bob, I'm afraid. What if you're killed? And, and what if John and, and my mother and your father and everyone, all of us, are hunted down? Don't say such things, dear Anne. I'm sure it won't happen. We'll drive them into the sea after a battle or so, even if they do land. And I don't believe they will. Shall we walk on a little? How pretty the sea do look in the moonlight. Ooh. <laughs> Woof! <laughs> You're out for a walk! Ah. Yes, yes, I am out for a walk. Uh, from the town? I'll swear it, ma'am. Upon my honour, I would. How clever you are. Yes, I am from the town. Uh, you are a visitor, then? I know every one of the regular inhabitants. Festus Derriman is my name, of the Yeomanry Cavalry. We hold our lives in our hands. <laughs> my uncle, he lives up at Oxwell Hall, you know. Plenty of money, pretty rich too. <laughs> well, what made you come here at such a critical time, eh? I don't say it's such a critical time. Oh, you would, if you were as mixed up as I be with the military affairs of the nation. I believe King George is staying hereabouts. You are one of the attendants at court, perhaps? Oh, no, no. I am with the theatre, though, not at the present moment. No, I have been out of luck for some time, but I have fetched up again, and I shall join the company when they arrive. Well, Faith, is that so? Well, what part do you play? There. I am mostly the leading lady, you know. The heroine. <laughs> well, I'll come and see if all's good and the landing's put off. Hang me if I don't. But tell me, what's your name? I'd like to know. I think you've got a fairly short memory, Mr. Derriman. Oh? What makes you say that? Oh, I remember you talking to me when I was going down to Overcombe. Oh! Oh, yes! I remember. I never thought... I should have the chance of giving you this, but I think it must belong to you. Oh. I found it in the mead when you were after Anne that time. <laughs> oh, well. Zounds. 
smell fresh meat. It is in my uncle's writing. <laughs> it is a memorandum of something he's got hid away. <laughs> I'll give it here, there's a dear. It is worth sterling gold. Halves, then. <laughs> yes, yes, all right, anything. Uh, but tell me, what is your name? I need to know. Oh, do you now? Yes. Fair's fair, I've told you mine. Matilda Johnson. Oh. <laughs> Shall we stroll, Miss Johnson? Oh, who do I see over there? Robert Loveday and, and Anne Garland. How I love them. Oh, yeah, just so do I. But what makes you say that in such a queer way? A queer way? Yes. As if you hated them. I have good reason to hate them, and I believe you do too. Since that fellow Bob Loveday has been home, they're always together. She loves that man, and I want to pop them. Why don't you then? Here is a splendid chance. Yes. Do you see that man there skulking in the shadows? Well, he's in connection with the press gang that comes ashore every night looking for men. We only need to tell him that Love Day is a seaman to be rid of him this very night. Ha! Done! Take my arm! Bye night, Lieutenant! Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Looking for hands, I suppose? It's not to be known, but we don't begin the press until later. Wow, that's a shame. We could show you some excellent games. What, that uh, little nest of fellas down Cove Row? Why, I just heard of No, them. no, no, come here. Come on! Now, there's your man. Why, he looks too good. Now, about some time ago, he was the mate of the Brig Peewit. His father has made money and keeps him at home, dawdling about. He's a rare catch, I can tell you. Hey, now you do tell of it. Uh, he do have a hint of sea legs about mm. him. Uh, what's the young man's name? Don't tell his name. Why not? I'd rather you didn't. Sure. No. Robert Loveday of Overcombe Hill. Robert Loveday. Right, sir. I'll get my man. Call him at once. <whistles> now that's your man. Come seize him. Hey, you look too good, sir. Are you sure? sure? Yes, yes, come that's your man. Come on, come seize him. Oh, come on, you. No, come on. No, 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 no. Now take it quietly, my young cockawax. You look as if you mean to, and tis wiser of ye. Where are you going to take me? Only aboard the Black Diamond. <laughs> if you choose to take the bounty and come voluntarily, you'll be allowed to come ashore before you put aboard ship. If you don't, I'm going to have to pity on ye. Not oh, have your liberty at all. As you have to come, willy-nilly, you'll do the first, if you've any brains, whatever. Don't you talk so large about your Come on, oh, no, young blowhard. Now, no more jabber. Bring him along. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, on. Oh, on. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. What did you tell his name for? Why, you chicken-hearted old stager. <laughs> well, you were as well agreed as I. How that man you... wronged you. How would you like to be dragged away from the woman you love like that? Blech. Go away and leave me. Oh. Well, <laughs> I will see you again, my dear Vestal. Oh, Bob! What have I done? He was kind to me and it wasn't his fault that I was kicked out. <laughs> what should I do? Bob, he'll be killed and it'll be all my fault. It's cruel. It's cruel. I'll get the blame. Oh, no. Will no one help me? It's Anne, and I will help you. I will help you. Matilda, you're here? Yes, yes, and I, I know all about it now. I'm all on your sides. Can nothing be done? No, nothing. They've, they've, they've taken him, the press gang. It's been such an awful shock. And... Anne, dry your eyes. Dry your eyes, dear. <laughs> now, I'll walk a little way home with you. Let's see. <laughs>
dreamed of your being taken. Oh, yes. The press gang collared me, and we had a bit of a scuffle, but I wasn't going to let those ugly fellows handle me. I've been willing to do my duty and volunteer at any time, and that's what I'll do tonight. If I can see Captain Hardy, I may get aboard the Victory and serve under him. So I best say goodbye, John. I'm glad to see you, John, because because I wanted to say, Jack, I'm terribly sorry that I've done wrong. How, Bob? In what way? Well, in, in courting little Anne. We see, she was in the same house as me. And we got thrown together a lot. And, well, somehow or other I've made myself her sweetheart. But then I got to thinking that well, perhaps you had first claim on her. And if so, Jack, I'll, I'll make way. I don't, I don't care for her. Not so very much, and can easily give her up. There's nothing serious between us. Yes, John, you, you try and get to her. I... I can look elsewhere. No. You stick to her, Bob. Never mind me. She belongs to you. She loves you. I have no claim upon her, and she thinks nothing of me. She likes you, Jack. Thoroughly well. As does everybody. If I didn't come home putting my foot in it, all would have been well. I should never have stayed at home. The sea is my home. I shall volunteer tonight. Goodbye, John. If I don't see you again. Goodbye. And God bless you, Bob. Oh, you! Are you speaking to me? Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, sir. Uh, have you seen a, a sailor go this way? A ugly looking mutton chop fellow? <laughs> he went that way. Oh, thank you. I'll get my men. <whistles> right, men. This time is this way. Right. <laughs> 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 nothing. My sight is so gone off lately, everything looks like a November mist to me. Yet I wish I could see today. I'm, I'm looking for the victory. Why? I have a son aboard her. He's one of three from these parts. There's the captain, there's my son Jim, and there's uh, young Loveday of Overcome, he that lately joined. Would you like me to look for you? Oh, Mrs, if so be you please. It's a tall ship, three masts, three rows of guns in her side, and all her sails are set. Ah, I guessed as much. 
There's a small flag flying over her bowsprit. The jack. And a larger one at her stern. The ensign. Uh, and there's a large white one flying from her fore topmast. Oh, that's the Admiral's flag, the flag of my Lord Nelson. Uh, what's her figurehead, my dear? <laughs> there's a coat of arms. It's supported on this side by, by a Marine. And on the other side of that figurehead will be a sailor. Are you sure it is the victory? I'm sure. <laughs> Twinkling. It must be the light hitting the cabin windows on the ship's stern. Ah, uh, we see now what the enemy seen by once. That was in 79 when she spotted the French and Spanish fleet off Sicily and retreated in fear of a landing. Ah, uh, she's a brave ship and she carries brave men. Lord, She's dropping away. She's gone. She's gone. God bless the ship of time before going into church to to think about your future of course we can wait and see the drilling as well <laughs> mr loveday calls it the awkward squad many of the men can't get away except for on a sunday afternoon now back to your future oh. we've often talked about it and we'd like to see you settle down now there's bob now he got aboard the victory owing to Captain Hardy at Portisham, knowing his father, so he'll do well. Yes, but Mother, Bob never writes anymore. I sometimes think he's forgotten all about me. Oh, my dear, someday he'll come home loaded with honours and promotions. I shouldn't wonder to hear that he's made a lieutenant now that he's serving in Lord Nelson's fleet. And then there's John, who is at Budmouth Barracks. John is a good and kind man, Mother, but I was angry with him when he wouldn't tell me why he'd sent Matilda Johnson away. I've written to say I'm sorry. I hope we will be good friends again. Well, any day he may be called to war. I think you ought to settle your differences. Left, right, left. Oh, here come the local volunteers. I'm quite proud of Mr. Loveday in his regimentals. <laughs> Sergeant. Certainly not. There's ten minutes before the service of God. Now, them's without firelocks fall in at the lower end. Quick about it, quick about it. Look at you now, you'll be a crooked in. Now, attention, dress by the right. <coughs> Now, I hope you'll have a little bit of patience and pay close attention to the words of command exactly as I give them to thee. And if I should go wrong, I'll be very grateful to any friend who'll put me right again. 
for I've only been in the army three weeks myself, and we're all liable to make mistakes. So we be, so we be. Right, the whole then. Poise, firelocks. Please, sir. <coughs> what do we do that hasn't got firelocks? Them that be armed with hurdle sticks must make believe as if they've got the real thing. Now, poise, firelocks. Present. And bang. Fire. Bang. 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 bang! bang! It was very good, except some of you were too early, and some of you were much too late. Please, Sergeant, can I fall out? I be master player in the choir, and my vowel strings won't stand this time of year unless they be screwed up and a four pass and get in. How can you think of such trifles when your own dear country is on the point of invasion? Now, priming, go back to poise. Now, we ain't got no powder, so we're all going to have to pretend. Now, shake out some powder and shut down your pants. Oh, I ought to have said at the word hand your cartridge, seize your cartridge, move it in one swift motion to your mouth, and bite the top off it. Please, hey, sir. Corporal Tullidge wants to know how's he to bite off his cartridge when he doesn't have a tooth left in his head. <laughs> Why, man, where is your genius for war? Hold your cartridge to the mouth of the man to your right and let him bite it off for ye. Beg pardon, son. What are we of the infantry to do if Boney comes afore we've got our firelocks? <laughs> Take a pike like the rest of the incapables. You'll find a store of them in the corner of the church tower. Church! We've been taking in the past. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Come back, call in. Now, next drill is on Tuesday afternoon. Now, left wheel, right turn, quick mark. Stop, 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 stop. Um, 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 uh, 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 Dismiss! And before Tuesday, I shall have a look in that government book. Fired the beacon? Did you get your signal to fire it from the east? No, from Abbot Sea Beach. But you're not to go by a coast signal. What well, joke it all, wasn't it? The Lord Lieutenant's direction. If ye see Rainbarrow's beacon burn from the north eastward, or Agadon from the north westward, <laughs> or the actual presence of the enemy. Was Bowley really here? No doubt of it. Ah, the beach light's only just gone down, and my man Simon heard the guns even better than I. <laughs> Well, there must be something in it. Tis the women folk we must look to first. <laughs> What's the matter, Cripple Straw? <laughs> the French be landing! Oh, where? Where? In West Bay and all of Budmouth is in an uproar. Oh, Lord! Tis true enough. He's come. Books out of the camp, Cripple Straw, don't leave me! Come now, it is the women folk we must look to first and get them safe away. And, my dears, go and lock yourself up in the mill house while I get your mother safe away with the others. May God spare us to meet again. Oh! <laughs> 
as these ever happen without foundation. Boney is a miserable wretch, likely to disappoint a one such as me. Oh, no, sir. Oh, no. But there are alarms pretended. Uh, yes, there was a yes. pretended Sally Gumbolts last year, sir. But was there nothing more like this pretended? Ah, uh, no, uh, I noticed your modesty in making light of things. But there never was, sir, no. You may depend upon it. He's come! <laughs> Oh, if Boney could only see you now, sir, he'd know there was not to be gained from such a determined skill philosopher, but, but blows and musket balls. Well, yes, yes, scribble, scribble. But if I ride on to Bunworth, all my training will be lost. No skill is required as a forlorn hope. True, sir. That's a, a point. You would outshine them all and be picked off at the very beginning as a true, dangerous, brave man. <laughs> but... But... But no but, sir. The fire in your veins won't let you stop. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm, I'm ill. I am ill and I... You can't think how strange I feel in here. <laughs> All oh, right, well, it is a nature that makes me draw back. It is, it is love. Oh, there's a woman in it, is there? Yes, I didn't want to confess it, but tis true. Strange how I should be so naturally drawn against my will to rush at them. Ah, sir, now I see who's himself I'd like to know when there's a woman round his neck like a millstone. Ah, well, something like that. Ah, <laughs> I feel the case. <sighs> now, sir, be you valiant. The words be a mere matter of form, of course. Be you valiant. Yes, of course. Then don't you waste it in the open field. Hoard it up, I say, for a higher class of war. The defence of your adorable young woman. Oh, once more I ask you to cast off that first haughty wish to rush to Budmouth and to go where your missus is defenceless and alone. Yes. Well, I will cripple straw. Now you put it like that. Yes. Good, sir. Thank you very much. Now go and I yes. her. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang flattery, Miss Cripple Straw. Can a man hide? without a stain. Well, sir, if you hadn't been in love, I own that hiding would look queer. Yes. But being to save the tears and the groans and the swoundings and perhaps the death of your comely young woman, your principle is good. Yes. You only retreat because you're too gallant to advance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm off. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Ah, oh, the dairyman! Do oh, you think I was a Frenchman? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's, a, it's a good joke. Why aren't you laughing, Miss Cripplestraw? I'd be laughing to the side of my mouth, sir. <laughs> Any fresh news, Sergeant? Hmm. Haven't you heard? Twas all a false alarm after all. What? There'll be no fighting this time. Boney's <laughs> not here. Well, oh, oh, Master I knew he would uh, disappoint. A one such as me. <laughs> I've news to take to the camp. I must well, be along. Oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I say, Derryman. Ah. Any ah. fresh news? Well, uh, you've been a long time getting up with me, comrades, seeing the glorious nature of our deeds done today. Well yes. said, Derryman. Well said. But what's the latest? What's the latest? Only 
that Boney is here! No! With tens of thousands! And that we are to meet him, sword in hand, oh, yeah. as soon as we've assembled in the town yonder. The man who quails now is unworthy of the name Volunteer! Volunteer! I'll take three frog-eating Frenchmen single-handed. There is good, good swords as you as you'll soon find! Yes. If they were three times on my short little friend, I three times, I would attempt them three to one. Ha! Now lead on, comrades. Run a come roar and tall and roar and run a come roar and tall and lay. Run a come roar and tall and roar and they'll find out the truth soon enough. Oh. <laughs> there you are. Oh, young madam, now you are caught. Missy Ann, I mean to have that kiss off ye. <laughs> Missy Ann, the French have landed, and tens of thousands are on the beach. You'll have to turn out as soon as Boney comes over the hill. <laughs> are you going to let me in? <laughs> Dash my wig. Who do you think that I am that you should lock yourself up as if I was some wild beast or a Frenchman? I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> I'm safe from the French up here. Well, then let me tell you. The alarm is false and no landing has been attempted. That was a little joke. <laughs> now, uh, will you uh, open the door and let me in? I'm tired. I've, I've been on horseback all day to bring you the good tidings. You know I cannot let you in. <laughs> <laughs> well, dash my wig, and I'll I'll find a way to get in. <laughs> Why do you wish it? I told you that I want to sit down, <laughs> and I have a question to ask of you: whether or not you will accept my heart and hand. I scorn to ask it of a haughty hussy who will only speak to me through a window, but. <sighs> I need an answer. Uh, I will think of it, sir. It's not a no. <laughs> yes. She's yes. going to say yes. <laughs> yes, why wouldn't she? <sighs> now, you have thought of it long enough. <laughs> I want to know will ye or won't she? I, I will then. What? No, 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 I, no, I cannot. <laughs> I, I, I cannot marry you, Mr. Derry. No, you, you have tried me beyond endurance. One kiss would have been enough. Now I'll have 40, whether you will or not. Open the door, or upon my soul I could kick it in. I could try another window. Ah. It's a ladder over there. Back in a minute, my dear. Now's my chance to escape. Hit horse! What? what? No, champion! Stop! <laughs> oh, she may fall off and break her neck and I will be tried for manslaughter and dishonour will be brought upon the name Derryman. I'll have my revenge on you for this. Mercy, Master Festus. Mercy. Surely I says to myself when I sees you a fuming there. Surely, Master Festus, be fuming. Because there's no chance of the enemy this year after all. I'm wounded to the heart, cripple straw. And the man yet oh. lives. <laughs> ah, and you want your horse pistols instantly. Certainly, Master. No. 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 Not my pistols. But... My new clothes, my silver top cane, my golden boots, and my new buckles that cost more money than you ever saw. Yes, I will tell ye, since there's no other fool near, I intend to court the pretty play actress. Play actress, yes. Master Derriman? Yes, I saw her the other day on the road to Budmouth and spoke to her. I will court her for my pastime and to sprite that Missy Ann. Dear. Now go and see to my clothes. No, oh, you're a deep one, sir. Two, four, six, eight, ten, 
12, 14, 16 and three quarters northeast. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two and a half northwest. <laughs> What's got into that old <laughs> rascal's head now? <laughs> Uncle Benji, are you here at such a time? Hey, you! What are you doing? Oh, 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 oh help! 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 Me! Thieves! Thieves! Oh, I'm only a poor old man a saving! A box! Oh! Oh! Nanky, dear! Oh. It is I, Festus! Oh! Oh! I'll carry a box for you! Oh. Yes! Yeah. Oh. No! 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 <laughs> no, no, no Fanky! No. Oh, Festus, dear! Oh! Ah! Uh, how have you frightened me? Oh, oh. oh. see, it's, it's a. It is not heavy at all, no, you see. No, it's not. Oh, so, so you've, uh, you've not been thrown off your horse and killed then after all? Hmm? No, no, Nucky dear. What made you think that? Ah, your horse passed me by just now. The stirrups dangling and the saddle empty. Oh, it is a gloomy sight, Festus, to see a horse. Cantering by without a rider. Uh, so you've uh, not been thrown off and killed then? <laughs> Stone dead? <laughs> oh, well, bless your heart for, for being so anxious. <laughs> what pretty picture were you drawing with your walking stick just now, eh? <laughs> ah, oh, oh, that! Oh, <laughs> it is uh, uh, just the way I have of amusing myself. It, Ah, uh, it, it shows how the French would have advanced to the attack. See? See? <laughs> it's just, just, just these trifles fill the head of a, a weak old man like me. <laughs> or perhaps where something is hid away. Money, for instance! No! 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 I use the old sock in the bedroom cupboard for any oh. guinea or two <laughs> yes. I might possess. Well, of course you do. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, why? Uh, look who's coming this way. Hey, who? Is it the king? Who is it? <laughs> oh, the, the old rascal. I'm after him. <laughs> Are you hurt, dear Miss Anne? I don't think so. Well, how did it all happen? I'll tell you. Well? No, 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 I cannot, I cannot tell you. How, how are you here? Is, is it true the French have not landed? Well, quite true. <laughs> the alarm was groundless. But you look very tired. Do you feel faint? Where am I? Well, what can it all mean? Well, she's had a fall of some sort. Oh, Anne, my love. How I love you. Ah! No, Mrs. Dana, no, never! Ah! I thought so. Derriman's at the bottom of it. Where am I? Well, somebody has been hurting you. Frightening you. I know who it was. It was Derriman. Was that his horse you were on? If I, if I tell you, I must not tell my mother. Right. Well, Festus tried to break into the mill house and kiss me, but I, I escaped from his horse. The wretch! Well, I'd like to. You must not go and do anything dreadful. Ah. Remember... Francis will succeed his uncle at the, at the manor, and, and if Bob succeeds in the milk, there must be no enmity between them. Well, that's true. Well, I won't tell Bob. I'll leave Festus German to me. Well, I'll deal with him quite quietly so that he'll never say anything about it. I'll warrant it. How, how, how did you come to be here? Well, when the alarm proved false, I, I came this way to find what had become of you, and because of that sweet letter you wrote to me. I, I wrote to you to say I was sorry about Miss Matilda Johnson. Well, I'm almost glad you did blame me, otherwise the letter would not have come. Oh, I've read it 50 times a day. Miss Garland, I, I want to speak to you on something that concerns my mind very much indeed. With your mother's consent, I want to pay court to you and the hope... No, no, don't go away, you haven't I, heard I yet. I cannot! Listen! Please oh, don't talk about this anymore now! Is that right? Oh, don't such good...
good news. That's some wonderful news that you have, isn't it? Have you heard the news, my son? No. Oh, Corporal Tullidge has just told us that the coach was chalked with the words, Great naval victory, glorious triumph. And now here is a sailor come who is aboard Lord Nelson's flagship with Bob. Come, Sailor Cornick, let's hear all about it. Oh, well, friends, there's been a great battle at sea of Cape Trafalgar, and the French be all defeated! Oh, 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 oh. But you hadn't heard all. I'm sorry to tell you of the death of Nelson. Oh, oh, my lord. What do you say? What's the name of the battle? Battle of Trafalgar. And where do you say Bob was wounded? Uh, Bob Bain's got a scratch this time. Oh. Well, Bob Bain wounded and Bob Bain killed. Why don't he come home? Yeah. Well, Bobby's remaining up at Portsmouth. Uh -huh. The truth of it is, he's very much engaged just now in oh, Portsmouth. Eesh. Like a good many of the rest from our ship. Oh. <laughs> Tis a nice young woman he's a courted oh, on. Oh, say! I've no doubt she'll make him a good wife. Courting? Wife? Oh, if he had been dead, I could have borne it. <laughs> but this is just too much to bear. Do you speak of Robert Loveday is courting your wife, sailor? I didn't see you, miss. Yes, I hope you don't mind. Oh, no, not in the slightest. I, I'm in, merely interested. And what is she? A very nice young master baker's daughter, oh, miss. Baker's daughter. And is she fair or dark? Her hair is rather light. Good. I like light hair. And, and her name? Her name is Caroline. Uh, but can it be this story hurts you, miss? If so... Uh, yes, yes, we don't care for more just at this moment. I say we do care for more. Tell all, sailor, when are they to be married? Uh, well, I don't know how the day is settled, but if you saw how the courting was scudding oh, along, dear. you'd say it wouldn't be long. <laughs> uh, well, if you see him again, please give him my best wishes and tell him that I'm so glad to hear that he is making such good use of his first days of escape. From the valley, from the shadow of death. Oh, Martha. I fear my news have upset the lady. <laughs> well, I think we all be a bit upset. <laughs> but thank you, and God bless you. You'll be anxious to see your father. I, I'll raise anchor and cast off. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, dear. <sighs> Did I hear a noise just then? Aye, it was Anne. But her mother says she's better now. Bob is a worthless blockhead, Father. If there had been any good in him, he'd have been drowned years ago. <laughs> John, John, not so fast. That's a hard thing to say of your brother, and you ought to be ashamed of it. Well, he tries me more than I can bear. Oh, good heavens. What can a man be made of to go on as he does? Why didn't he come home as soon as he landed? Why didn't he write knowing we should hear of the battle and be anxious? Oh, it is scandalous of him to serve a woman like that. Well, well, my son. You must get her to think less of him and more of thyself. It would be a good thing for all. He hath forgot her. And there is an end to it. Yes, he has forgotten her, but she has not forgotten him.
Are you never going to turn round? Oh, hello, John. You've come too early for our tea party. Oh. I've not even laid the table yet. Oh. Well, can I help you? Oh. And how many things would you break, pray? <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear about poor old Mr. Derringman. Dying so suddenly, it's like that. He, he went out like a candle. Yes, poor old man. Well, I brought down the newspapers. Here is one with a full account of the battle, and this one is a full account of the shipping news. I don't care for shipping news anymore. The military news is the news I like. But, but Bob is in the Navy now. But what smartness is there in soldiers, sailors? They only waddle like ducks. And they only fight silly battles that no one can form any idea of. Whereas military battles, there's such art and such splendour. And the soldiers are so smart. I like the cavalry best of anything, you know. And the dragoons the best of the cavalry. And the troopers and trumpeters the best of the dragoons. Well, I'm so glad to find you here alone. Have you ever thought of what I once asked you? Oh, John, you shouldn't start that again. I'm always another woman. Well, that's all the more reason why I should speak to you. I don't see it quite like that. But you feel yourself quite free, don't you? Quite free, yes, but you are not. I am not. Well, Miss Matilda Johnson. Oh, well, that woman. <laughs> you know as well as I do that was all made up. But haven't you heard the other news? She is going to marry Festus Derriman. You don't say so. Well. Yes. Since the old man's death, Matilda has managed to secure Festus, who is supposed to come in for the hall and the squire's money and everything. Well, they'll make a good scheming couple. Anne, dear Anne. I want to cheer your life, and to make some amends for my brother's bad behaviour. If you cannot love me, liking will do well enough. You are so good and, and kind, John, and... Shall we go for a stroll just before tea? I should like to show you what the men are doing upon the down. What is it? Well, they are cutting out a huge picture of the king on horseback and the earth and the hill. The king's head is to be as big as the mill pond here, and his body as big as the garden here. And the horse will cover more than an acre. I'll go and get my bonnet. The ladder for you, Master John! Oh, thank you, David. Oh, are you all right? Oh. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Oh, thank you. It is from Bob. Dear John, I've drifted off from writing till the present time because I've not been clear about my feelings. <laughs> Is he ever? <laughs> but I've discovered them at last and can say beyond all doubt that I mean to be faithful to my dearest Dan after all. The fact is, John, I've got into a bit of a scrape with a girl up here at Portsmouth. <laughs> and now I find there's nothing in her. No niceness and no sense. All tantrums and empty noise. Though she seemed monstrous clever at first. I shall come home and make all things right, please God. In the meantime, will you keep up Brotherly eye on Anne, and guide her back to me, your affectionate brother, Bob. I'm ready. Would it? Wouldn't it be better to put it off, say till tomorrow? Why? There's plenty of time now. My bonnet ribbons are undone, aren't they? Yes, they are. Will you do them up for me? If you wish. <laughs> your handshake, John. Are you nearly done? No, not yet. <laughs> Miss Garland, Bob is a very good fellow. Not that man's name to me, please. Oh, heavens, this is more than I can bear. What's the matter? I can't do it. What? Tie your cap ribbon. <laughs> Why not? Because you are so... Oh, because I'm so clumsy, I can never tie a bow. You remember what you once asked me, John? In what sort of way? In the way of my future life and yours. I'm afraid I don't. Oh, John Loveday. Yes, I do remember. Well, need I say more? Isn't that sufficient? Oh, it would be sufficient, but... Oh, Anne. I've been thinking lately that men of the military profession ought not to marry. Ought to be like St Paul, I mean. Fie, fie, John. Pretending religion. It's not that at all, is it? It's Bob. Yes. Yes. I've had a letter from him today. He's promoted. He'll be a gentleman someday and worthy of you. Or read what he says. 
before he died, God rest his soul. We found it behind the chimney board in Miss Anne's bedroom. Oh, what an extraordinary place to find it. Uh, put it down there, David, for the moment. You'll speak to Bob, won't you, honey? If he wishes me to. He's made a lieutenant now, but he's been dreadfully wounded. Oh, has he? Hello, father. Son? Mrs. Garland? <laughs> Bob? What will Tullidge? Oh. Right, glad to see you, Anne. How do you do? Very well, thank you. Why, what's the matter with thy face, my son? Oh, that. That's where that Frenchman's grenade busted and hit me. From the Redoubtable, you know? As I told you in my letter. Not a blessed word did you write, son. What? Did, didn't I tell thee? Oh, I meant to, and oh, I forgot. The <laughs> sword didn't in your forehead too, Bob. What, what did that mean? Uh, it's where his line stunned with the other wound. Ooh. Nasty chop with a cutlass. <sighs> it is all up between me and her. She won't speak to me again. You must wait a little, Bob. What wound in your head, Bob? That takes me back to Valenciennes in June 93. We trenched, we trumpeted, we drummed, and from our mortars tongues of iron hummed. Athwart the ditch the night we bombed the town of Valencia. Twere in the June of 93, the Duke of York, our then commander, being the German Legion, guards and we laid siege to Valencia. We were all sweating with the bombardiers. A shell was slent to shards against my ear. Twas nigh the end of hopes and fears for me at Valencia. They bore my wounded frame to camp. Shut my gaping skull and washed and clean And joined them with a silver clamp That night at Valencia We brought him back to quick from dead But never more on earth while rose is red Will drum rouse corporal, doctor said Of me at Valencia to a true, I never hear the hum of bees and don't know when the cuckoo comes. At night and day, I hear the bombs we threw at Valencia. Now, heaven with Jasper Halls is the only town I care to be in. Good Lord, if Nick should bomb the walls as we did Valencia, Valencia.
dog day here. I have an order from the captain from his regiment. This is important. Aye. Your regiment has been ordered out to join Sir Arthur Wesley's army in Spain. Camp will be struck this morning before the ma march out to Budmouth tomorrow. This is very sudden, John. What it is to be a soldier, John. We shall all be sorry to lose you. Well, friends, I must go. A trumpet major has no choice when his captain commands. Father, just a word before I go. It is hard to go away just now, but as to Anne, I, I shall pretend that I do not love her. So leave the way clear for Bob, and there's an end to it. Well, well, my son. You're a fine, brave lad. May God bless you. <clears throat> I can't say any more just now, for there's a girt lump in my throat. <laughs> You'll say goodbye to John. Bob. Yes, Father, I will. Goodbye, Anne, dear. The staring time's in front of me, and God only knows what will happen. John. I must tell you something. You were wise to not take me at my word earlier today. I did not know myself, and gratitude is not love, John. Although I wish to make it so you, you don't think I'm thoughtless for what I did. Oh, dear Anne, don't let yourself be troubled. What happens is for the best. Soldiers love here today and there tomorrow. Tis the way of us, you know. The soldier's heart is not worth a week's purchase. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Anne. May you remember us as long as it makes you happy and forget us as soon as it makes you sad. Bye. Now then, Bob. She's yours by right. Treat her well. For my sake. Farewell. Godspeed, Jack. And thank you. Thank you a thousand times. Goodbye, all. Anne, you must try and forgive me. You are dreadfully offended with me, I, I know. Uh, let, let me take your hand. That will do. I can't let you go. I wish you to let me go. Makes me think of all the times when I was up aloft, clinging to a yard arm in the mid-Atlantic and thinking of you. I could see you in my fancy, plain as I see you now. Yes. Me or some other woman? No. No, I'll, I'll protest. I, I never thought of anybody. All the time we were dropping down the channel. And all the time we were off Cadiz. All the time through the, the battles and the bombardments, I seem to see you in the smoke and the fury. <coughs> then why didn't you think that when you landed after Trafalgar? <clears throat> well, that, that, well... <laughs> Ah, see, that's, that's a curious thing. Uh, uh, you may not believe this, but when a man has been away from the woman he loves best, he can take on a curious sort of a temporary feeling towards another without disturbing the old one, which flows on just the same as ever. I can't believe it, and I won't. <clears throat> and I love you best of anybody in the wide world. I've been terribly bad, I know. But if you can only forgive me, I promise I'll never do anything to hurt you. What be them bells ringing for? What's the well, news? Well, I've come to tell you of a rattling good wedding up in the village. My young master, that there many are married to the actress gal. <laughs> what do you say? The bells be ringing. Whose funeral being told oh, in for? Oh, no, it's a wedding. Master Derriman is a married today. Well, have he got the old squire's money? Well, he thinks he have, but they can't find the box with the old man's will in it. <laughs> Oh, here he is, Master Derriman. Well, well, who'd have thought to see you two join together? Ah. Now we've come to tell you the joyful news, Miller. Let us see if you've located my uncle's strongest. It belongs to my dear husband, and we can't find it. Oh, love! 
That's the box that David found in Anne's room. Well, well, let's see what's in here. In the name of God, amen. I, Benjamin Derriman of Overcombe Hall, being of sound health, body and mind, do hereby revoke all wills, codicils, and other testamentary dispositions here to reform made by me, and do declare this to be my last will and testament. I give, devise, and bequeath Overcombe Hall and all my real and personal estate of every description unto my dear young friend and God. What? <laughs> Well, what does it say here? Oh, yes, you've not forgot, Master oh, Festus. Yeah. Furthermore, I bequeath my five small freehold houses in Park Street, Budmouth, to my nephew Festus, as sufficient property to maintain them decently without any margin for extravagance. <laughs> oh, Park Street, Park Street. <laughs> Well, Anne, now, now you are a grand lady, I, I suppose there's no chance for me. I shouldn't like you to think I have no hearts. Well, then, will you be mine? You're to show good behaviour for six months. <laughs> and then, perhaps I might. <laughs> for this, uh, this tour uh, um, production of Trumpet Major has been a wonderful thing for us uh, and we would just like to celebrate that and, and ask you to share it with us. Um, so I think we've got some presentations to be made. Thank you. So we'd like to call on Lucy now. Come on, this is Lucy Bishop, who directed the dance. special occasion and there will be people here I'm sure who can remember the previous production of this which was in 1978 which was for the Hardy Society um, so it's very appropriate we should do it again for you and there are actually people here this evening who were in that uh, 1978 production including over there the chap who was firing off the blunderbuss Andy Worth <laughs> Two other veterans that will be known to some of you as well. So Andy Venton, who's over there, who's been filming for us, um, played the part of uh, Sergeant Stanner. Mm -hmm. Finally, on your way 
out, if you spot a person entirely clad in um, bright yellow lycra, <laughs> that's Rod Drew, who was the previous um, trumpet major. <laughs> Have a safe journey home, have a really good conference, uh, lots of wonderful Hardy related events over the next week. So, do come to as many as possible. And could we finally have a final round of applause for the cast? Thank you. Yeah.